We've learned a little bit about the transport system, our circulatory system, and we know that the heart is a big part of it because that's what's gonna to help to pump the blood all over our body. So what is the heart really? It's a muscle and it's used to pump the blood to the body. The heart is made up of four chambers. The upper chambers are called the atria, which is plural. Atrium would be singular. So there's a right and a left side. The lower chambers are called the ventricles and there's also a right and a left side to that. Now, if you notice, the diagram seems to be wrong. When we look at diagrams of organisms, if we're labeling right and left, it's the organism's right and the organism's left. So it will appear to be backwards. So the right atria, upper chamber, right ventricle, lower chamber, left atrium, left ventricle. Typically, they tend to get abbreviated. We're going to label which sides we think are oxygen rich and oxygen poor in just a minute. But remember a couple of things. The atria are the upper chambers and they receive blood from either the body or the lungs. The ventricles being the lower chambers are connected to the atria and they pump blood to the body or to the lungs. So they're gonna receive blood from the atria and they're gonna pump the blood either to the body or the lungs depending on which side. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to label this diagram down here and I'd like you to try to label where does the blood, the, sorry, where does the blood go and where does it come from? Where does it come from? Where does it go? So I want you to label from the lungs to the lungs, from the body to the body on this diagram. Note that we've labeled one side oxygen rich and one side oxygen poor. So I want you to pause and try to label where things go and where they come from. Now that you've tried, let's reveal. So what happens is, is the blood is gonna come from the body. It's very poor in oxygen. The cells have already picked up the oxygen and they've dropped off their carbon dioxide. So the blood comes into the right atrium, gets pumped down into the right ventricle. Being that it's poor in oxygen, it's gonna to go to the lungs in order to pick up oxygen. It's gonna to go to the lungs and it's gonna pick up the oxygen and it's gonna come back to the left side of the heart from the lungs into the left atrium, which receives, pump down into the left ventricle, which is then going to pump it to the body. This now, remember, is rich in oxygen. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna practice some of the labeling. Remember this again is a very simplified diagram. When we work on this in class, we're gonna look at a real heart and see what things look like. But for now, a simplified diagram just helps you to get the logistics of things together. So if we were to start with our body, remember our body uses the oxygen, drops off carbon dioxide into it. So when the blood comes from the body, it's gonna come from your lower body and it's gonna drain from your upper body into what are called the vena cava. We have an inferior vena cava, which comes from the lower part, and a superior vena cava, which comes from the upper part of your body. It's gonna come into the right atrium and it's gonna go through a special valve. Remember, valves help blood to flow in only one direction. So that tricuspid valve, it's called, heads the blood down into the right ventricle. The right ventricle is going to squeeze and as it squeezes and pumps, it's gonna close this valve so that the blood doesn't go back into the right atrium. When the right ventricle pumps the blood, it's gonna go through something called a pulmonary valve or a pulmonic valve. And remember, pulmonary refers to the lungs. So the pulmonic valve is gonna allow the blood to travel into the pulmonary artery and go to the lungs. Remember this is poor in oxygen. So we're gonna to go to the lungs in order to pick up oxygen. So we head out to the lungs. Remember there's a right and a left lung in your body. Remember you have two. So the pulmonary artery actually switch splits in order to go to each lung. It's then gonna come back from the lungs through what are called the pulmonary veins. Remember veins take blood back towards the heart. But we came from the lungs, so this one happens to be very high in oxygen now. It comes into the left atrium, the upper chamber, and it's gonna go through a valve, just like it did on the right side. That valve is called a mitral valve or a bicuspid valve. We're gonna talk about ways to remember the names in a second. It goes through the valve, squeezes, pumps the blood, goes through the valve down into the left ventricle. When the left ventricle pumps and squeezes, that valve is going to close and it's going to allow the blood to go through the aortic valve into the aorta, which is the largest artery of the body. 
much, much larger than many of the other arteries, very thick walled because there's a lot of pressure coming through there initially. This is very oxygen rich blood and it's gonna head out to the body. And then we'll start the cycle all over again. So what I'd like you to do tonight is I'd like you to practice the pathway and I'd like you to practice the names in order to try to remember them. There's one way that I try to remember which side the tricuspid valve is on and which side the bicuspid valve is on. It may not work for you, so you might wanna come up with your own way. But if you think about the left atrium, we usually label in capital letters, when you make a pen stroke to make an L, there's two strokes, down and to the right. Well, two, bi, bi means two for bicuspid. Two pen strokes in the L, the bicuspid must be on that side. For the tricuspid valve, tri means three. If I make a capital R, there's three pen strokes. Down, I make the circle, and then down again. Three pen strokes, tri, there's three flaps to the tricuspid valve. That's on the right side. Just a little way to try to help you remember. You might want to come up with some sort of a mnemonic or poem or song or something to help you remember this. We'll go through it a little bit more in class. Remember, the valves help the blood to move only in one direction.